we're going to look at the day, month, and year functions. So day has one argument, serial number, and that would be the date that you want to extract the day portion from. So that's what day does, extract the day part of a date. And month extracts the month part of a date. And year, you've guessed it, extracts the year part of a date. So you could now filter and sort on any of these values. Could be an if function that evaluates on day, month, or year. It could be just a normal sort and filter, but that may be useful in lots and lots of different contexts. One context we'll look at is where we need to do a calculation. We need to calculate the number of months between these two dates. So first of all, we'll calculate the number of years between the dates and then add on the number of months. So a year. So that'll be the year of that date minus the year of the start date. And we'll then say times 12, the number of years times 12, but we'll need to put the subtraction part in brackets. So it's performed first. Multiplication is performed before subtraction, unless it's in brackets. And then we'd add on the number of months between those two dates. So we take our finish date minus the month of our start date. Press enter, I get eight. So there is a useful calculation or a useful application of the year and month functions. There is another way of doing it though that I might as well mention at this stage, and it's using a function called date diff. Now this function it actually isn't documented for some reason in Excel, so you won't get any screen tip for it. But it's quite easy to use. Basically, its first function is start. The first argument is start date comma. Second argument is end date comma and then in quotation marks you specify what unit or what part of the date you're calculating on so for example it was month we put m in quotation marks close bracket and i get eight if it was years we put y in no years no complete years between those two dates so you can see that you can put d y or m Within those quotation marks, we wanted M, and that gives us our eight. So, although this is undocumented, probably in this context, I'd use date diff rather than day, month, and year, which makes for a slightly longer formula. In this example, we're going to use uh, conditional formatting to highlight dates that are in this year. So, let's select our cells that we want to apply the conditional formatting to. So control shift down arrow key to select down to the last consecutive value. And then I do control backspace to go back up to the active cell. Home tab on your ribbon, conditional formatting. And we're going for a new rule. We're using a formula to determine which cells to format. And we're basically going to write a formula that says equals the year part of this cell which wouldn't need to be fixed. So I'm pressing F4 to take the dollars off. Equals this year here, which will need to be fixed. So the year part of this date, if it equals that year there, we want to apply a format. So I'll just change the background color of the cell. Click on OK. Click on OK. And you can see that it's formatted those two years there. If I change this to 2016, it would highlight the 2016 date there. 2020, it highlights the 2020 dates.